Hey, what's going on YouTube? Now I haven't made a video in a little while. I've been pretty busy with school and some other things, but I figured I'd um, make a little video here. I've got a new radio, the FT FTM 100DR. Um, the main reason I got it pretty much is for the APRS. Uh, so I figured uh, after I've been using it here for a week or two, I'd go over some of the setup and uh, show you guys what I have in mind and how to use some of the functions. And then maybe at the end of the video, I'll even show you um, how to send a text message or an email out using APRS. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is just turn it on. So you hold in your display button to go to your settings. And menu item 10 is going to be APRS. So you go here and under number 5, it says modem. To turn APRS on, you want to make sure that you change this to on. Then all you have to do is go back, back, and back. And you'll see I have a special channel here for APRS, but you want to make sure that um, if you're in the U.S. anyways, you need to be on the frequency 144.390. So go ahead and put that in here. That is the APRS frequency uh, used in the U.S. You can use other ones, but you're not going to be able to use digipeters and stuff like that if you don't use 144.390. So, like I said, I have a special channel set up for it. There's not anything different between this screen and this, only that I have it named, um, and it shows the frequency up here. So we're going to go back into our settings and go back into APRS. Now, the first one is your compass menu, and it's just going to change which your heading or your north up. I keep it on the default, which is heading. Now, your APRS destination, This uh, the name for this is a little misleading. It's actually kind of like the origination, like it's the type of device that you're transmitting from. Uh, this is hard-coded, and it's going to stay that. You, you can't change that. Filters, you can, uh, you can filter specific messages that it transmits. I have, if I have weather data, it'll transmit it. It'll transmit my position data in my, uh, my mic E data. Message text, that's just pretty much your message that goes along with a beacon. I'm just testing, so I put mine in as testing. Modem is on. APRS mute. If you have this on, whenever you're on the APR station, if you receive packets, it doesn't play them out loud. I like to be able to listen to it because it's going to tell me if I receive something or how clear it's coming through, so I always keep this off. Like that right there. That's actually coming from my real my DigiPeter that I have uh, here in Richmond, Kentucky. The APRS pop-ups, how long uh, pop-ups pop up whenever you get a message. Um, the transmission delay is um, kind of like the delay after you transmit, obviously. Units, I keep mine, um, oops, camera's out, a little out of focus here. So I keep mine mostly in the American um, the Imperial system. You can change this to the metric system if you like. Beacon info select, this is pretty much what to include with your beacon. Your status text is your current status. Um, I just have my radio name as my status. Beacon TX, now here you want to pay attention to this because uh, there's different types of beacons. You can have it automatically do it every so many seconds or minutes or you can change it to smart beacon. And it's really recommended that you do it as smart beacon, especially if you're traveling because that's going to transmit whenever you slow down, whenever you speed up, whenever you stop, whenever you make a turn. Pretty much the important times that it needs to transmit is going to be smart. So make sure to have that to smart. You can set it to something else, but uh, yeah, not really. So your digipeter path select, you can, this can be off, wide one, uh, wide three. I mean, number three is going to be wide one one, wide two one. You're going to use this mostly if there's not a whole lot of digipeters around. Um, and if you do have, you know, a few digipeters around and you're able to hit at least one and get into an eye gate, you could you change this to wide one one. But you're going to be most most likely to get into an eye gate if you use this bottom one. This if you have too many digipeters around though, just go to wide one one to you know free up some of the network congestion. This is going to be your call sign. Um, message group you can have it set automatically message reply if someone messages you 
you can change your position set from your GPS to manual. If you do manual, you'll have to put in your coordinates manually. Um, you could do that if you don't have position or GPS um, signal. And that's if you can use the manual position if you want to set in your normal one. So most of the other stuff besides uh, you want to go into your smart beacon, you might want to take a look at this. Now there's three types you can store and the types are pretty much you can put in user settings or it has all default settings. But type one is typically what you're going to use when you want to report the most. Um, you, it's going to, you have a low speed and a high speed and then a slow rate and a fast rate. Well, the slow rate is what it's going to transmit when you're going um, below that speed. The fast rate is what it's going to spend, uh, transmit if you're going fast, like faster than that speed. Obviously, if you're going faster, you want to transmit more so you can get G more GPS positions out there because you're going to be changing position a lot faster. Your turn angle, I think this by default is set at 28, but I needed it to transmit a little bit more than that. It's basically like the minimum amount of turn that it needs to transmit. So without further ado, uh, that's pretty much the basics. Um, and I said I was going to kind of show you guys how to send out a text message. So we'll go ahead and do that now. So to see your messages, you hold in your GM button. And then you'll go to log. And you have a station list and a message list. Uh, I'm just going to go to the message list. And I'm going to hit edit to create a new message. And in order to, this is going to be difficult to do with my phone. In order to send a text message, um, what you want to do is the message needs to start out with an at sign and then the phone number. So we'll do at and I'm going to use a um, one of those text free numbers that way you all just don't spam my phone number with you know telephone calls or whatever and you'll just keep hitting the side key every time you get something typed in there you'll need the area code and all that good stuff this would probably be much faster if I just typed it in on the um, the hand mic but I don't have that many hands. So we got the phone number typed out. And the next thing you want to do is you want to make a space. And then you'll do your message. And to keep things short and simple, we'll just do hi. So H I. Now once you've done your message, you're going to hit hold in this button down here and it's going to transmit it and as long as you hit a digipeter or an eye gate it should reply back to you and then acknowledge it uh, you might hear my phone too um, so we're going to go ahead and hit the transmit button oh actually we have to do it too so you're going to hit the arrow over so that it's going to go to SMSGTE and that's going to be it's kind of like a call sign. It directs it to the text message system that's set up. And that's it. Now we can transmit. You should see the red for the transmit. Then we'll get a reply here. And it says acknowledge. And I just got the text on my phone. And that's how that goes.